Well, hello everybody. Oh, you know what? I tell you, technology. I've been playing all day with technology, and we're gonna we're gonna get the camera. How about we get the camera set up there straight? How about that? Can we do that? Hey, there we go, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to this episode of Communications and Cigars. Of course, why would we not have technical difficulties as always? But welcome. And welcome to this week's episode where we're going to be talking about pagers. I got, I'll be honest with you, I was so involved with looking at the pagers and doing the research that um, I completely forgot to set things up. Uh, one of those days, right? So uh, what we are going to talk about tonight is we are going to talk about pagers. And I think, I think everybody's going to have a really good time tonight. And why? Because I don't know about anybody else, but I will tell you this. I loved pagers. I really, really, truly loved pagers. And um, I kind of miss having pagers because um, it was so easy to use and do and everything like that. So for tonight, we're going to talk about it. I got I got notes. So I'm going to be looking up at the screen. I am not ignoring anybody or anything like that. But um, wow, it's just, it's just like a trip down a memory lane and then B to top it all off, it's kind of like, man, wow, I really, really so miss paging on there. But anyways, that's what tonight's episode is about. We're going to get to that in a little bit here. Otherwise than that, welcome to tonight's episode about uh, our communications and cigars, where like I said, we're going to talk about pagers, and we're going to, of course, talk a little bit about cigars, because what would communications and cigars be without talking about communications, and as well as talking about cigars. So first of all, welcome to everybody. On there, I already see the chat has filled up. Um, it was um, really nice to see everybody in there. Um, I kind of hit a little bit of a personal milestone, I feel, in my opinion, that I'm kind of, I don't know, I guess I'll gloat about a little bit. But uh, Communication Cigars, we've hit over 300 subscribers on our channel here. Uh, so I do really appreciate that. Uh, you know, we, you know, as I kind of talked about in the past, and I talked about a little bit on um, other shows I've been on, you know, where did communication cigars come from? Well, it came from going really uh, discussing about, um, you know, just talking about stuff. We, we I was getting on the radio at home and uh, basically sitting out on the porch, you know, on the radio talking on there. And then next thing you know is I go ahead and was having a nice cigar. And then next thing you know is it just kind of started to evolve. And one night I was basically playing around on Facebook and then that's when it happened and that's where kind of communication cigars started out from so kind of happy about that um I do thank everybody for coming over here um and uh you know we would be remiss if we did not go ahead and welcome everybody that's in the chat here so Andy good evening Plaza Storm thank you for coming in Smoking Ape good evening um, welcome to the channel this evening, Lon, good evening, Chuck, KB8YIT, Phil, W0RHP, Richard, K -K KO4OBR, Chuck, KK6USY, Phil, W0RHP, um, Gottfried Smith is in there, good evening, uh, John Hummel, good evening, VE5JHN, Marvin Dressen, thank you for jumping in there too. As I scroll through here, Wild Cascadia Radio, good evening. Temporary offline. Um, I'm glad T.O. sent you. Um, very important about that. <laughs> and Ben Manley. FEP Labs, hey, thanks for coming in. Ron, N8WCR. Thank you, everybody, for jumping in here tonight and coming in as we are going to talk about pagers. So let's first go ahead and talk about cigars. You know, what an interesting things I actually saw. Oh, we have a few more last in. End off. Good evening and W5 IPA. Jason, thanks for jumping in there. Oh, Liberty Cave WS7PB jumped in there also too. Thank you at the last minute. What are things I figured we'd talk about on with communications and cigars tonight when we get on the topic of cigars um, is actually something that they're actually uh, taking a very close look at right now. You know, obviously with all the skirmishes and everything like that happening 
in the war right now. There is a great concern about dealing with, um, you know, like um, importing of things like that on there. And so we're going to be basically standing by. A lot of cigar makers um, have started to post things saying that there might be a little difficulty getting some cigars. They don't hope that it's going to happen. They don't hope it's not going to take too long on there, but um, who knows exactly what is going to take place on there. So just kind of go ahead and keep it an idea in there. If you are looking at cigars, I would say don't wait. Um, try to try to get and beat the rush on there, uh, especially with summertime coming up, better weather coming out there, cigar um, usage and sales actually do go ahead and tend to spike up. So you want to do that. And, you know, with rising fuel costs and stuff, who knows what exactly is going to be happening with um with with the prices on cigars, I know there have been some places that have said, you know, you know, sorry, shipping charges, delivery charges, everything like that. You know, we're going to tack it on to the customer. So my suggestion would be is do not wait, especially if you're getting some imported cigars. Um, I know uh, many people have different ones from Spain and all that. So, yeah, just kind of kind of keep that in the back of your mind there. So that's our little Diddy about cigars tonight. Communication cigars. Of course, if you ever have any questions, ideas, comments, thoughts for the show, go ahead and there's the email address up there. Communications-cigars at jjkcom.com. Once again, communications-cigars at jjkcom.com. We thank JJK Communications for helping support our show. Uh, they're the ones that have thrown some money at this to get the cool green screen, which makes me look like I'm in some government cia place or anything like that on there uh but uh we do appreciate them and helping out with that so let's go here real quick and dive into pagers yeah look at all those pagers there a uh, great deal amount of pagers you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna i'm gonna take myself out of here because you know what it's only fair that we do that <laughs> and get you out of there myself out of here look at all these beautiful beautiful devices out there and we are going to talk about all of them tonight and the reason we're going to talk about all of them tonight is, is because they're they're interesting um you see kind of this history of paging this history evolved um of things on there because in the upper left we have tone only pagers um then we had numeric pagers and alphanumeric pagers and we're going to talk about tone and voice paging and then we're going to talk about tone and numer tone of voice and numeric paging and we're also going to go ahead and talk about a type of digital voice technology that just didn't take off and man do I wish it did I wished it did so bad but it didn't and I see people in the chat I've had three of those I had five of those you know what I've I've unfortunately I've had every single one of these pagers yes um and you know what I'm not sorry I'm kind of happy about that I'm kind of happy about that. So let's go ahead and let's actually talk about Golay paging, first of all. Let me move myself out of the screen here. Goodness gracious. So um, let's talk about Golay paging here. So Golay paging is going to be the first one, as I move myself out of here, is kind of the first type of paging that we really kind of were exposed to. Now, Golay paging stands for... Golay sequence, sequential, I should say, code, or GSC. And what it did was is that it was a one-way 2FSK. So when we say 2FSK, we mean frequency shift king format. Now, here's the thing. It was developed by Motorola. It's capable of transmitting tone, numeric, alphanumeric, and voice pages. So that's why you see what you see on the screen here. So on the far left-hand side, those were just pagers all they did was beep. All they, they That's what it is. They just beeped. And um, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. Has anybody ever seen Dr. Beeper um, from Caddyshack? All righty. I, I couldn't find out if I could actually play that clip, so that's why I didn't. But on there, he was like, yeah, he was like, dee, 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 dee. You know, he always was there. And that's, you know, his funny name, Dr. Beeper, because that's what he had. He had one of those Motorola Beeper pagers. When what happened is, is that the Golay format was sent, and the pager beeped. And then you knew to call an office, you knew to call in or, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Then you had actual numeric paging. So that was actually the next kind of paging that evolved on there. And numeric paging was really kind of able to be to be able to do, do it was able to do. It wasn't that hard to do it um, on there because what would happen is, is, is that when you went and used 
Golay paging. It was actually sent at 300 bits per second. Okay, 300, basically 300 baud, and then that was data. And then um, in some cases, you could have um, up to 600 baud. Alrighty, so it was kind of this weird kind of combination of what the speeds can be sent at. Now, it was really interesting because when you dealt with Golay paging, uh, it was it was designed really for just data. And I say it was weird because, or kind of interesting, because a lot of people didn't really understand what paging was at that point in time. The difficulty with paging, and this was really kind of started out, was how you can send or how you can get the data out to there. So that's why if you notice it did tone easy, did numeric easy, then you see the old alphanumeric pager on there. I mean, I, I still have the like the 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 one that's no longer functioning. My girls used to play with when I were young. But then on the far right side, Motorola did a combo. And I actually have some of these pagers and they actually do work. It is considered or called a numerical tone and voice. It was a keynote. And what ended up happening on that one is, is that you could send the Golay code, the, the Golay GSC code, and that could send out the numerical display on there. Otherwise, what would happen is, is you could have it and it was built into a five, six tone paging combination on there. We're going to cover that a little bit later, but I don't know if anybody was ever familiar with the, um, the, the company called Shopco. And if you're familiar with Shopco, Shopco used to employ a lot of these pagers, these alphanumeric um, tone and voice combo pagers on there. And the reason they did that was because they were able to do that in the store. So if they had a manager and the manager needed to pick up extension two, they could just page them with the number two. If they needed to send a message out to the group saying, um, can someone come up front to help, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Guess what? They were able to go ahead and send out that tone of voice. Now, this is this is long before we had, you know, the two way radios, the concept of having two way radios, like in Walmart now and, and target and all those things like that, you really didn't have a need for the back and forth communication. So that's where these kind of pagers took place. And that's what goal a really was on there. So it was, once again, it was kind of an interesting thing. It was an interesting part of the world on how it came into play. Uh, once again, it was a little bit of something that Motorola said, "Hey, here's what we're gonna do," and voila, blah. You're gonna you're gonna go ahead and 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 have paging. And once again, ahead of its time. If you actually take a look, tone paging was actually around like in the 70s, and because it, it was super simple, you just put up a giant transmitter antenna, and then you didn't have to worry about numeric coming through scrambled. You didn't have to worry about alphanumeric coming through scrambled. You didn't have to worry about scratchy voice or anything. As long as that pager could hear the coding on it, then boom, it, it did it. It did it there without, without an issue or anything like that whatsoever. All right. So now what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the second voice mode and my picture is going to pop up here. So I'll just pull myself down there a little bit. How about, how, you know what? How about this? Let me take my ugliness out of there again. Sorry about that. Now we're going to talk about Poxag paging. Okay, Poxag paging here is was another interesting form of paging that took place. All righty. Now what happened was is that remember Golay was designed by Motorola. Poxag, which is quite interesting, is designed by the actual British post office. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So POXAG actually is a, a, a mnemonic for something. It stands for Post Office Code Standardization Advisory Group. That's what the POCSAG stands for. Now, it was also sometimes known as Super POXAG or Radio Paging Code Number 1 or RPC1. It once again used one-way Two FSK, so two frequency shift keying. And what we mean by that, of course, you know, frequency shift keying is using frequencies to shift tones. But what happened is, is it used a two level type of frequency shift keying. Um, when you get into like DMR and all those kind of things, those are actually using four FSK. So it kind of gives you an idea of where we're at with technology at that time. 
But what happened was is that Poxag was a little more efficient than Gole because now what could happen is you could transmit these paging protocols, this data, at 512 or 1200 or 2400 bits per second or baud. So that was actually kind of increasing the speed on there. Now, this Poxag is actually coming back around, okay? And the reason that it's coming back around is, is that if you own a hotspot device or you have any sort of these other little tiny like MMDVM boards and stuff like that, they are actually now using the Poxag protocol. You can actually purchase an actual pager and then that pager can actually be used through your hotspot and stuff to transmit or send messages on there. And I've known a few hams that have done it. They've done it for different reasons or different purposes on there. So that's kind of the interesting part about there. Now, Poxag was actually started by the British Post Office, what I said. Now, the reason that was started by the British Post Office is they used to run nearly all telecommunications in Britain before privatization took place. So in other words, the British Post Office was sort of like a, for sake of a better term, they were kind of like the keepers of the telecommunications industry on there. So in those aspects of things, you can easily go and have a commonized format. Now, Poxag came over to the U.S. and really, 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 really took off, all righty? And what happened was is that when it used this frequency shift keying, it used a 4.5 kilohertz shift on the center frequency. So in other words, if the frequency was at plus 4.5 kilohertz, that would rep a zero. But then if it went to negative 4.5 kilohertz, it represented a one. So normally nothing on there with, with no shifting of the frequency whatsoever, it was basically like your baseline. If you shifted 4.5 kilohertz, up or positive, that would be a zero, and then negative 4.5 kilohertz, that would represent a one. So that's important to understand because Poxag, even with Gole to a degree, you are really taking a look at just trying to send ones and zeros. And ones and zeros, <coughs> excuse me, in a in an essence, to be able to know, hey, this is this is a one, this is a zero. These combinations create this data and and what have you on there. So really Poxag was a giant leap forward. And a lot of paging companies picked up on Poxag. And um I guess you can even go one step further and say Poxag was was given a de designation, which you know is kind of somewhat important to a degree, which they were given a CCIR recommendation of 584. And that's how it kind of came up with radio page code number one, which basically said, hey, if you want to have a communication signaling format and you want to use Poxag, this is the format. This is what you need to have. This is what you need to do in order to be compliant. And it's sort of like what we would call like a like how let's say DMR. DMR has an Etsy or not an Etsy standard. I'm sorry. And um, uh, Etsy is that thing that my wife uses um e help me out here in the chat um is european standard european esti i think it was in there um and the, and it said basically if you're going to make a paging format and you're going to call poxac it needs to meet these specifications that's kind of what it is um on there so that was poxac and like i said it's kind of coming around like once again, like I said, um, I haven't had a really good chance to sit down and play with it. Um, there is DAPnet. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of DAPnet, um, but it's a place where you can actually sign up, get registered, and be able to send al uh, al well, numeric and alphanumeric on there. And if you're more interested about it, here's what I would suggest you do. Go to DAPnet if you're in ham and you want to do it. Um, H-A-M-P-A-G-E-R dot D-E. So basically hampager.de and dapnet will go in there dapnet stands for decentralized amateur paging network it's a network open and by amateur radio enthusiasts you have a basically a cap code in there and and then you can send pages on dapnet now what they tried to do with dapnet for the ham side is that they suggested everybody use a certain frequency and basically it was a uhf frequency and then that way, what would happen is if you knew someone who had a Poxag amateur paging transmitter, if you were on that same frequency, 
in essence, your pager would receive a page. So basically how paging networks used to be. Now, if we talk about addressing and signaling for these pagers, it's what they call the CAP code. And the CAP code basically was a series or an address system of numbers that you would put into the pager. And then when the data burst was sent out over the air, you would, in essence, hear that data burst. And then you would know, oh, hey, hey, here you go. Um, here's, you know, here's the information that's going to be coming through there for you. And I'm going to actually turn it up. I'm going to try to see if I can get um, the audio to come through. And we'll try that here. And let's see if we can here. Alrighty. Whoopsie. And that is the audio of what basically um, was was coming through. That's what you would hear on there. You wouldn't understand what it is. You wouldn't understand anything what it is. But guess what? That was someone getting a, a page at 512 baud was the first slow one. And then the 1200 baud was the second one. Now, what was even more interesting, I think, is, is that with Poxag, your pager would alert differently if it was receiving or was set up for 512, 1200, or 2400 baud on there. But the neat thing about it is Poxag frequencies, they had a lot of ranges that people were able to do and use it on there. So based on whether you were in Europe, the UK, France, Germany, USA, or something like that on there, um, it was all over the place. Everything was all over the place on there. So um, lots of interesting stuff that actually happened with Poxag on there. Now, the next one we're going to do here is as I go ahead and get my face out of the way here on this one here again, too, is, is we're going to need to talk about flex paging. Now, flex paging is was kind of came out. Now, of course, you know how jokes are on, you know, if Motorola can't can't beat them or win, you know, win them or control them, then they got to beat them somehow, some way. And Motorola then came out with Flex. Now, Flex stands for Flexible Wide Area Paging Protocol. And what ended up happening was, is Motorola said, you know, pagers are going to go and have to constantly sit and use battery and listen. And what I mean by that is, is that when it's when the pagers are sitting, it's going to be constantly listening, listening, listening for its addressing and stuff on there. With what, what ended up happening with Flex was is that um, they said, you know, let's increase the pager battery life. How can we do that? And the way that they did that was they became up with Flex. And what happened was is it used a series of two FSK or four FSK. And what happened in that case is, is that it said, okay, wait a minute, we're going to take it and we can put a pager in this flex mode and let the pager in essence go to sleep for a little while. And then when it would hear its preamble address, it would wake up and then hear the full thing. So that's why basically if you had a pager like on the, the screen here, you'll notice that the battery life always seemed to last, always, always, always seemed to last on there. And so what happened is, is that it had some different speeds based on if it was 2 FSK or 4 FSK. So if it was a 2 FSK for frequency shift king, it would either be sending out at 1600 baud or 3200 baud. If it used the 4 FSK speed, it was either sending out at 3200 or 6400. The reason that they wanted to increase the speed as compared to other modes is, is that it needed to be faster because now what you're doing is, is you're having tons and tons and tons and tons of people with pagers on there. You could not take the time for a standard POXAG message to go through. And here is another quick audio sample of Flex. <laughs> Now that was at 1600 baud. So that, I mean, you could just tell, man, that is shooting out the traffic fast and fast and fast and fast. Now that's, once again, 1600 baud. Let's take a listen to 6400 baud real quick. All right. That sound is, once again, at 6400 baud. And it's, it's like, it's kind of weird. It's like, 
well, wait a minute, what's so special about that? But if you think about it, think about a back when paging was popular. Like you had, uh, I mean, because, you know, like basically using Minneapolis St. Paul, pagers after pages after pages are coming through. You needed to start throwing these speeds out there really fast out there because you could not have that delay. And if you think about how paging is, I mean, think of the all the different paths it needed to go through. You pick up your phone, you dial the pager number, you dial into the paging service. Then you would go ahead and if it was numeric, you'd have to enter a telephone number or you would have to send it alphanumerically. Now, alphanumerically could sometimes be done by a teletype device, basically, that would connect into your phone line that you could send the page that way. Um, operators were able to, so you could buy an operator service to send a page. Or as things progressed, you were eventually able to go into the terminal or something. So for an example, I had Mincom was a pager at one time, and then I also had, um, uh, what were they called? They were called... Ameritech paging and they kind of just progressed through names and got it bought out and all that kind of stuff. But I was able to actually go online and then send a page through there. Later years, just before paging was kind of dying off, you could even go and text a message to a pager on there. So thinking of all those steps in there, you really kind of got to see, man, once that page came in, it needed to get out right away. And services like EMS and fire and all those things were using these, these paging services as somewhat of a backup. So obviously you didn't want to delay that on there. So that's what was kind of coming down the pipe. And, and that's why flex was pretty much the most popular. And for the most part, kind of where paging died on there. And I say paging died in the conventional sense of one way paging. Because we're going to now start to move in to some of the other paging modes on there. So the next paging mode that we're going to talk about, and I'll remove my face once again, is reflex technology. So reflex was now an overlay of flex technology, but it allowed you to do two-way operation. <clears throat> so in other words... What happened was is that we said, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute here. We're going to go ahead and have a device now that not only can you receive a page, but you can also send a page back. Now, this is what happened when it came to two-way paging. The coverage was really, really, really hobbled. And what I mean by that is, is that you would go and have to have two separate frequencies in there. So your normal receive frequency for your pager was in the normal paging range of 929 to 932 or 940 to 941 megahertz. So basically where all of the current pagers were sitting at for flex technology, basically, because that's what it was easy to do. It was easy to put 900 megahertz all over the place, right? But then what happened is, is that if you wanted to transmit from your device back to the tower, you needed to go and your pager would transmit on 896 to 902 megahertz. Now, the issue was, is that this little device on your hip was pretty much like the power output of a cell phone, and it had to get back to that specific paging tower. And the worst part about it with reflex was, is that you had to ping the tower in order for your pager to to really per se work. There were some times, in some cases, where you would be able to receive a page and not have to act back, but then some of the time, you just weren't gonna be able to send a page exactly whatsoever. I mean, it was just done. It was exactly just a single one-way paging. And that kind of upset people, and that really hurt two-way paging. Now, of course, what ended up happening, boom, text messaging started to come around for cell phones and cellular technology. And that was, that was kind of starting to take place at the same time two-way paging was out there. But the one thing that two-way paging had going for it over cell phones and SMS messaging, if you remember, if you were around and you had a cell phone way back in the day when text messaging first came out, you could not text message across networks. You could only text message within a network. You couldn't even send an email from a text message. It's it's not like it is today. It really isn't um, on there. So um, now with this with this two-way messaging, 
you really had to start working into to basically making it work and making it work correctly. Um, and I say that is, is because when you were looking at modulation, it started to use frequency modulation, free, uh, fast frequency shift kink. So now you're really trying to send data back and forth because it was sort of like an ack knack system on there. And that's what it really kind of was. So we're going to try to play an audio of here. Okay, so that first one you heard was actually the pager trying to call out to the tower. And it was sent, sending those sync bits to sync pulses. And what you heard then on the second one was a basically on a, the second, third, or fourth channels on there, which was basically the the normal quote-unquote paging channels, you were hearing that act back from the tower trying to send the, the message there. So once again, this first one, was basically the pager calling out to the tower. And then you the basically the pager was saying, hey, tower, 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 do you hear me? Now all of a sudden, here's what's happening. This tower is saying, oh yeah, I hear you. Let me send my message to you. And it was basically an ACNAC system because you have to remember on this one here, you or could be receiving large amounts of data. Now, there was a cap on there, and, and someone could, um, um, God, I'm trying to remember how much it was. I think it was like either 160 or 240 characters. And the second thing I would say that that really hurt two-way paging was is you were you were charged by the character. So if you think people are weird for like typing LOL or, um, uh, you know, 2FN for like too funny or something like that on there. No, <laughs> if you had a two-way pager and you were not using it for business and you were you were going back and forth and you were just kind of doing these weird text messages, you quickly learned how to take a long message and condense it down to 160 characters on there. Um, and and yeah, it was it was really weird and really interesting. But yeah, there were times that you were charged by the the letter or the yeah the letter. So it's like if I wanted to say hi, please call me. It was H-I space P-L-E-A-S-E space C-A-L-L space M-E. Well, John, you just spelled it out right. But every single one of those was a letter. It was like it was like one cent or a half a cent. It was just ridiculous. It was just ridiculous on there. So that was kind of the reflex technology of paging. And that is, that's, like I said, reflex was two-way. Everything else we were talking about was one-way and like I said, I, I'll be honest with you. I think personally, if cell phones and cell phone text messaging did not advance as fast as it did, I feel two-way paging would have really, really, really stuck it out there. Because what also too happened is, is that, and we're not talking about it here because it's not there, BlackBerry had a separate system before it was tied into the cellular networks. It had literally, it had its own system that you would do, and it had a small communication device. I had an original one of the original Blackberries on there. I could receive email and this and this and this and this, and that kind of stole the limelight from two-way paging, and then text messaging now was happening, and then it just two-way was like, hey, we're we're caught, and as fast as it came up was as fast as it went away. The other thing which really hurt it was coverage sucked. Coverage sucked big time on there. If you were not near a major city, forget it. Forget it. You're you're done on there. All right, as I go ahead and move my voice or my picture here, sorry about that. We'll take that one away now. Now let's talk about tone and voice paging. Tone and voice paging was really good in many areas for many different purposes. So, for example, fire departments, EMS, we use tone and voice paging. That's how the county activates us. Our pager goes beep, 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 and then the message comes across. Now, there's two types of tone and voice paging that were out there. There was what we call five, six tone paging, and then there was actually two tone paging. Now, some people go ahead and say, well, there were more types of paging out there. Yes, but what it is is that it was just different formats. So, 
five, six tone pages. Let's talk about that. And, and for my friends that are watching in the UK, man, I love five, six tone paging. And I don't know if I can actually, if I have any tones on there. Um, I'm going to look it up here real quick on there. But uh, five, six tone paging is basically a combination of sending five and six tones in an addressing system on there. So let me see if I can find one here while we'll talk about it. But with five, six tone paging, what you basically are allowed to do or what it would do is it would do send a series of tones. And upon sending that series of tones, it would alert the pager out there. Now, lot, this kind of really kind of came into play because um, it, how, how do I want to say it? it's like it was easy and simple to do. Plus, it had more addressing. OK, um, and what I mean by more addressing is, is that with two tone paging, you really are limited to how many tones you can have. So you have to have two tones, obviously. But what ends up happening is, is that and I'm trying to find it here. Uh, you know, it's so hard to find it here. Um, you know, you, you kind of wish that I uh, could find it easier. But with that sound, um, you had more addresses with five, six tone paging than you could with actual two-tone paging. So two-tone paging and five, six-tone paging all have a template on there. So with that template, you're going to see or, or or kind of be able to lay out and saying, okay, if tone A is, let's say, argument's sake here, 900 hertz, what I could do for tone B is I could have it the same as 900 hertz, or I could have it 1,000 or 1,100 or 1,200 or 1,300, and you'd have to make that combination. With 5-6 tone, you didn't really have to do that because the format used 12 separate frequency tones to represent decimal digits 0 through 9. And then it would send a repeating tone and a special function tone. Well, what the hell does all that mean? Well, basically what it was is, is that the tone bursts were sent in 33 millisecond durations. That's that's the five tones on there. The six tone burst was used for multiple multiple addressing applications. So in other words, what could happen with five six tone paging is is that five tones could do individual addressing. Like you want to page me specifically, or you want to page that person or that person. But then if you add on that six tone, then you could activate a group of pagers on there. And that really was the nice part about it because now with your five, six tone paging, you really had, you really had, once again, more addresses, more, I, I, I don't I can't even really describe it, but just more people you could put on a frequency for activation. Now, once again, five, six tone really kicked off in um, the UK and Europe, European countries, just because it just it was easier to do. As a matter of fact, Motorola even went one step further, and then um, they made the GP. How was it GP three hundred? Someone can help me out here. GP three hundred and a few other ones, and they included five six tone signaling on there automatically. Where in the UK or US here, they only did two tone paging. And then it was kind of like, hmm, okay, well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess it's un understandable and all that kind of, of, of jazz on there. And But it was, if you could get a, if you could get something on there, it was really, really cool to be able to play with 5-6 tone. I'm going to try to pull it up here real quick. Let's see here if I can here. Um, but five, once again, 5-6 tone paging. Uh, once again, really simple, really easy to do. And I'm going to, once again, sorry, working on this here thing. The internet doesn't want to work tonight here. So here, let's see if we can do it here. Okay, so that quick tone that you heard, that do 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 that was basically sending a 5-6 tone call to another user so what you would hear over the air is just that and it would be that do, 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 and that would alert the other radios on there um if you have i'm sure i saw it in the the chat here a little bit if you have a unication you actually can go and use a unication pager they actually have five six tone paging in there um some of your tyts um they have some of that stuff on there 
And um, yeah, it's um, really, really kind of a fun kind of type of technology on there for tone signaling. Now, the other one we're going to talk about is two-tone signaling. Two-tone signaling is really where I kind of got my start into the whole radio world. Because with two-tone signaling, it's kind of the... Um, uh, the the Johnny and Roy kind of thing on there, uh, where you had where you hear uh, two tones. One is usually, and this is where that argument gets into about formats. One tone is like one second, and a second tone is three seconds. That's the Motorola Quick Call to format. But then there were also other types of formats too, where you could have a longer A tone and a shorter B tone. And somewhere a neck tone, um, it, just everything across the board. And what it did was, is it really kind of was like trying for people to, 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 to be kind of that niche kind of thing. Excuse me. So there you go. Hey, I I have a neck format, so I need to use a neck format. Okay. Um. You know. Uh. You know. It just you kind of. Kind of everybody just had to get into their little thing on there. So I'm trying to find some pager sounds here for you so people can know. If you have a pager, um, you, you know these sounds by heart on there, of course. But um, uh, it's very used for signaling. Um, lots of places. To, okay, Chicago Fire. Yeah, I just see someone message me. Yeah, is that the sound from Chicago Fire? Yeah, you know, you know, doo dee. And once again, used many, many places around the world. Now, here is going to be my next favorite one. And I'm going to, once again, clear my ugly face out of there. Inflexion. My God, was this ahead of its time, people. My God, was it ahead of its time. This was absolutely amazing. And I bet there's a lot of people that didn't know about it. And guess what this was? This was digital voice. All right, I call this the first true digital voice system. So... What do I mean by that? So this right here was also known as the Motorola Tenor, T-E-N-O-R. And it went by the name of Pocket Talk. Now, what happened with this technology is it used reflex technology and it used FM signaling and it used linear signaling. All righty. Now, here's what happened. So it's part of the Flex family, but what happened was is it said, okay, Motorola said, you know what? People want paging, but they don't want the FM tone of voice paging, okay? So like we just showed the pictures there a little bit ago, you saw the two pagers, and it went beep, 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 and it was annoying. People hated it, all righty? Now, what happened was is Motorola said, Let's use advanced voice and data messaging. Hmm, I wonder if Motorola made another type of technology around that same time that integrated, dispatched, enhanced network. Get it, everybody? Okay, anyways. So what happened was is that they made this thing so that it was, first of all, in the narrowband PCS channels. So it wasn't in your normal paging channels. It was above and beyond those, those normal paging channels. And the reason they had to put it in PCS was it because of the way that it works. So what would happen is, is that this device here that you see on the screen here would go and basically be in sort of the range of the paging system in the two way paging system. That's why we kind of said it's a, a play off of the reflex system. And what would happen is, is, is that it had a specific code in there. And what ended up happening was is with that code, it was basically talking to the system. Now, what I would do as a user, okay, or like someone paging someone here, I would dial the telephone number. And when I would dial the telephone number, I would go ahead and I would listen, you know, do that. Like, hey, Bill, it's John. Can you please give me a telephone call at your earliest convenience? Thanks. Click. Now, what would happen is, is the paging system would send it out on the paging network to signal the device on your screen here. Once that device was signaled in the market, let's call it, the paging tower would see, okay, of let's say the 20 paging towers in the area, tower 15 
said, oh, I just, hey, we just pinged out for this pager. I just heard this pager answer back to me. And then Tower 15 would, in essence, send that page to that device, but it would come out in audio. And that's where the Pocket Talk technology really took place. So once again, it was it was this really cool system where the messaging unit, if you could say this, so this part here, would respond to control the equipment to do it. So in other words, when you had like with, let's say, flex pagers or even reflex pagers, well, more so flex pagers, if you went along and had nationwide paging, that page would go off all those towers because the pager didn't know. The pager didn't talk to the system. It didn't know if you were in Minneapolis, St. Paul, if you were in Chicago, if you were in New York, if you were in LA, it didn't know. It just knew, hey, I need to send the paging off the whole network because that pager has nationwide coverage. If you had regional coverage, you may be like, so the Midwest region was kind of a little bit of, you know, uh, Minneapolis, um, you know, Minnesota area, Wisconsin, Illinois, maybe a little Indiana in there too. That was sort of like the Midwest area. Well, then we'd go off all the paging towers in the Midwest. This was different. Because now the voice messages would be delivered on the same frequency to messaging units, which are geographically separated from each other. So there was no transmission interference. Once again, you had all these different paging towers out there. But just like if anybody's used simulcast or you've had two signals on at the same time, it would basically say, hey, tower system, here you go. This I, I'm, I'm here, I'm on Tower 15, you know, Tower 15, you hear me? Tower 15 says back, I hear you. Tower 15 says, everybody else shut up, I'm going to send this to them, and it would come out in a voice message. And, I mean, it was using 50 kilohertz channel spacing and a signaling rate of 112 kilobits per second, or KBBPS. So if you think about that, you know, we're talking pretty, pretty fast speeds that's delivering that technology. Now, one of the flaws about it is, is that it didn't really catch on because people really didn't have a need for voice paging at the time. It really was ahead of its time. But also, too, is because of the way the system worked and the compression techniques and all these kind of things like that, sometimes the messages were hard to hear. Sometimes the messages would not be fully brought through or you would hear somewhat sort of like the digital side of things where it'd be like, you know, hey, Bill, give me a call when you get a chance. And there was really sort of no way to kind of replay or pull it through the system again, unlike two way messaging, which was the reflex technology that can go ahead and do that. Um, but I mean, this was really ahead of its time. I had one. Actually, my mom had one. I got it for her. And it was really great because now with the pocket talk, it was put through the na uh, major carriers. I think PageNet, PageMart. Um, I think, I don't know if Skytel had it on there, but those were the, the companies that actually had it on there. And um, you got an 800 number with it too. Um, it wasn't really that expensive in the scheme of things. I mean, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, I mean, yeah, it was, it was along the lines like $18 a month, but I mean, now $18 a month is a drop in a half, but you had unlimited paging, unlimited messaging. It was just really, really, really kind of a cool thing on there. So I guess I'm done drooling over Inflexion. Uh, but once again, it, it just was so far, so far ahead of its time on there. Well, now we come to that part of the weekly show. You know what really bends my antenna? So you know what really bends my antenna is, is that unfortunately paging technology is sort of like the Atari. What the hell do I mean by that? Well, guess what? What I mean by that is, is that things that are retro are kind of common popular once again. And paging provided a means of, in my opinion, a more of a simpler, easy form of communication. Now I know you're going in saying, John, how was it an easy form of communication? Well, it was something that was one-way messaging, which to this day, we don't really have one-way messaging. We are all about two-way messaging as a world, as a society. We need to send a message, and then we need to make sure we can get a reply back to that message. 
where sometimes in some situations, we just are going to go ahead and send out information and we're not really looking for a means of a return on it. Now, it's kind of interesting when we take a look at this, because if we really think about it, some of the things that we do in the business world, some of the things we do in the amateur world, some of the things we do in the marine world, some of the things that we do in basically any forms of other communication on there is not really a two-way messaging aspect on there. An example, APRS, one-way messaging. We are literally beaconing out on there. Now, when I bring up these things, the reason I say that is because there is still a strong area for pox ad communications. I mean, look at, once again, we talked about having hotspot type devices that would send out pox ad messages from the internet. This is a great form and means of one-way communication. And I'm not just really in talking about POXAG. I'm talking about all formats and the concept of paging. The problem that it comes into is, is that the technology that's in those devices is kind of at a cusp, meaning it's probably not very cheap or easy to get a flex transmitter. It's probably not pretty easy, probably very difficult at all to get a reflex transmitter. And guess what? I don't know what happened to all the Inflexion transmitters, but guess what? If I could get one for myself, I definitely would be there. But if we look at things such as Gole and Poxag, which is simple, basic messaging, and forming standards, which is Poxag, why is paging system not going on anymore? Which kind of begs that one question, well, we have advanced forms of technology. Yeah, we do have advanced forms of technology, but there are still times where we have to think about how we need to communicate. Communication, if what many people think about, is, a, in essence, a two-way type mode. I'm going to transmit so someone can receive, and they're going to transmit so I can hopefully receive them. Yeah, that's what communication is, John. Thanks. What I mean, though, is, is that sometimes you have to get the message out there. Now, with the way technology is working, the way technology has moved, we've started to kind of say, man, if I can't get an ACK or an ACK back, I can't get that message or I shouldn't be able to get that message whatsoever. And that's not the case. What I do suggest is if you do want to play with sorts of technology out there and you do want to find out interesting stuff and forms of one-way messaging and stuff, don't be afraid to do so. Go ahead, buy a POXAG pager. And I guarantee you, there's a little place that's a four-letter acronym on the internet where you can get a ton of this surplus equipment on there and be able to use it. Heck, for that matter, if you're still even a crystal-controlled fan, you could probably even get a few pagers that are still actually crystal-controlled out there. But the fun part about it is, is that it's a means of signaling. It's a message of signaling. I could tell you that there are people that are actually renting paging systems. Well, some people may go ahead and say, well, John, what do you mean people are renting paging systems? Well, guess what? Next time you go to a restaurant or something like that, and you've got that you know, 30, 45 minute wait, they're going to give you a little weird red flashing coaster. Guess what that is? That's a means of going ahead and getting a paging signal. That is really, in essence, the original tone signaling that has come back to life. All that person does at that counter is simply enter the number of that pager coaster or that little pager device, depending on what they have, hit that number, and it sends out that actual POXAG data. If you're a radio geek, we'll use that term, you can actually take and look on the back of that and see sometimes what those frequencies are. They're usually in the UHF business band frequency area, but I've seen some that are actually in 900 and actually even, I think, in some of the VHF or even low band frequencies. But then take your scanner or take your radio and listen to it, and you'd be surprised. You hear these little ah, data bursts out there of POXAG paging, and then magically the person next to you is going to start to vibrate and jump up and down because guess what? It's time for them to go ahead and eat. So that's this week's, you know what bends my antenna? And that's this week's episode, on top of it, of Communications and Cigars, where we talked about paging. Like I said, it's quite a fun, interesting thing. I've seen from the comments here and stuff, a lot of people said, hey, I had a pager, hey, I, you know, all this kind of stuff like that. And as a matter of fact, you can even set up your own little devices. Many, and I've talked about this before, many devices like these little data radios have POXAG paging capabilities built in there. You just need to actually have a dumb terminal or an ASCII terminal interfaced into there. And now guess what? You have a little device that can send a page. You go buy your pager off of the online place or whatever, whatever, for a 
eh, maybe a couple 20, 30, 40 bucks or something like that. And now you can go ahead and believe it or not, page the kids around the neighborhood if you want to. Page the wife if you need to. Set it up for an alarm. Whatever the case you may want to be, there's endless and endless and endless applications for paging. So until then, I want to say 73 to everybody. Stay safe at this time. Um, weather's getting better. We're going to have more episodes. Hopefully when it gets better, we're going to go back outside and probably be able to actually enjoy a cigar while we're doing the episode. So until then, relax. And if you have a cigar, enjoy them. <laughs>